In this video, I will show you how you can display temperature and humidity data on a WLED matrix panel. This project makes use of the WLED API library to send JSON commands from a separate microcontroller. Keep in mind that you can also apply the concept of this tutorial to other types of sensors to display any type of information you would like. So let's begin. For this project, I'm using a WeMOS D1 Mini microcontroller for sending the WLED API commands. And for the temperature humidity sensor, I'm using the DHT11 module. The first thing to do is to prepare the hardware by connecting the sensor to the microcontroller. This sensor module has a very simple connection, only needing power, ground, and a single digital I.O. pin. For the display, I'm using my 32x32 LED matrix wall panel, which I had built in a previous video. Now moving on to the software. I have linked the full code below on GitHub if you would like to download it and follow along. Below the header info, I begin by including the necessary libraries for this project. In my case, I need to include the DHT library for this sensor. Be sure to replace this statement with your specific sensor library. The network settings are where you will enter your Wi-Fi SSID, password, and the IP address of your WLED matrix. Next is the program parameters. Here's where you define which pin your sensor is on and declare the sensor type. In this code, I have added a special feature where the color of the text will transition from blue to red as it increases in temperature. You may change those threshold values here. And finally, I had to initialize some color variables here. Up next, I added a function which will take a JSON string as the input and send a POST request to the WLED server with the API command. Without going into too much detail here, the comments summarize the actions taken. Now, we reach the setup function where I initialize the serial communications, initialize the sensor object, and connect to Wi-Fi. In the loop function, I am first taking readings of the temperature and humidity from the device. After filtering the value through conditional statements for determining the color, the variables are passed into a formatted string, and then the function is called to send the API command. Here's where you will need to enter your own API command according to your project. The easiest way to generate the API command is to use the WLED interface. Begin by setting up the segments as you would want them to show the temperature and humidity. For that, I will select the scrolling text and rename the segment 0 to something easy to find. For example, temp. Then I will pick a color and adjust the Y offset position. Next I will add another segment for the humidity. For this, I will need to use the overlay effect. This will allow both segments to show together. I will unselect the temp segment so that I'm only editing the humidity segment. I will select the scrolling text, pick another color again, and adjust the Y offset position. Here you can see where the text does not show properly with the overlay effect. Make sure when you apply the overlay that you only apply it to the bottom segment and the other one remains unchecked. Once you're happy with the colors and placement of the text, go ahead and save it as a new preset. Now when you expand the preset you just saved, it will show the text of the API command. This is what you can copy and paste into the code. Now if you were to upload this as is, it should work to send the API command and send the text exactly as you had set it up for the preset. In order to display the temperature and humidity data, we'll need to concatenate these two variables as strings into this command. To do that, find where you had named the segment, the first one being temp, delete the word, then close off the beginning bracket. This will end with a close parentheses and a close quotation mark in order to align with these over here. Then I concatenate the variable above and convert it into a string. For the second half, I'll need to rebegin the raw syntax string with an R, quotation mark, open parentheses. That will align with the end one over here. The last thing to enter here is an F, since the temperature will be displaying Fahrenheit. Now we'll need to do the same thing for the humidity variable. Look in the string until you find the name of the second segment, in this case, HUM. I'm going to paste the same thing I copied there, which is closing off the first raw string and beginning the new raw string syntax, and concatenating the variable. Here, the variable name is humidity. Then I'll change the F to a percent sign. The final thing I want to do is insert this color data variable 
so that the color will change from blue to red when the temperature goes above 75 degrees. For this, if you ever need to find which variable to replace, you will want to reference the JSON API library, which describes in detail each option that you can change, such as brightness, transition, and more. In my case, I'm looking for COL, which is the array of colors. These are formatted as three arrays in the code, and these are what change these items here for the foreground, background, and gradient. So if I return to the code now, next to the temp, I find the column key value pair. If I change this array with the array above, this will change the foreground color, which is essentially the text color. For that, I will delete this, close off the first raw string, then concatenate the color data, and reopen new raw string syntax for the next part. Since this is already formatted as a string up here, I won't need to call the string method again as I did for this one. And with that, the code is ready to upload. As you can see on the matrix, the data is now showing with the temperature on top and the humidity on the bottom. If you have any questions or suggestions for how this may be improved, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>